Hey, what's going on? Welcome back to the Rockman Power Hour, a podcast where we talk to some of the most interesting people in the world of movies, pop culture, and everything in between. And we're really, really excited this week to be joined by um, a director who personally has been my favorite director uh, of the last 10 years, hands down. His name is Ari Aster. Um, you know him from the incredible studio A24, from such films as Hereditary, Midsommar, and now his third feature-length film, Bo is Afraid. So we're going to be welcoming Ari Aster to the show today. Uh, but before we go too far, let me bring in my co-host, Ryan Stick. Ryan, what are you doing? Um, try not to burp. <laughs> but I'm also, uh, you know, hanging out, man, having a good time, uh, getting over what I saw when we saw the movie the other day. It uh, frightened me to my core. It's crazy, right? You know? I, yeah. I, I, uh, I, I was a big, um, listen, I, I've been anticipating this movie for a long time. I kind of expected it to blow my mind, but I didn't expect what I saw. I mean, it was like, it was everything I wanted and more because it really pushed the envelope. And I love when a film takes me on a journey. This one really took me on a journey. Like, it was three hours long and I felt like it didn't feel like, like when I went in there, like it's three hours long. I was like, Oh fuck, this is going to be long. It wasn't. It no. felt like it moved. It, it moved. Yeah. It moved into, it felt like different worlds sometimes, but yet it was all one. And it, I guess it's kind of like the visual equivalent of like kind of those swings that Primus would take in a song when yeah. it comes to tempo, chain groove and style. Yeah. And you're just like, what <laughs> yeah no no i know i know I know. definitely definitely yeah uh, but before we also before we go too too far uh let's thank our title sponsor uh the wonderful heartbeat hot sauce i'm holding up a pineapple habanero it's a wonderful um medium to hot hot sauce and the reason i know that is because heartbeat on the back of their bottles have heat meters how cool is that so if you're at a store and you're like man i don't know which one i should get this isn't too spicy well then you know what to do yeah so, Maybe Ari Aster needs kind of like a, a fucked up meter on the back of his movies <laughs> where people who are going into the cinema know exactly what they're going to get in for. Oh, yeah. And, uh, yeah. You know, this is an 11, <laughs> I would say, out of 10. It's uh, so, you know, it, it stayed with me. And that's the most interesting thing. Like, there's nothing worse in artistic movies than indifference. And that is far from that. Like Joaquin Phoenix, he's so captivating. You just you keep watching him. Yeah. He's he's almost as delicious as heartbeat hot sauce, is what I'm trying to say. Use our promo code Rockman20 to get 20% off your entire order. Um, and uh thank you to Heartbeat Hot Sauce and thank you to our friends at Studio House Designs as well. Wow. Absolutely. Oh, Studio House Designs, hey like the Beetlejuice. We finally came in the mail, Wayne. My Sports Illustrated swimsuit issue. No, what actually came in the mail was this Beetlejuice shirt that I've been wanting since October. Nice. Or late October, I should say. Yeah. And uh, yeah, Steel House Designs, man. They, uh, they did me right, I gotta say. Sweet. And uh, now it, this is my first Beetlejuice shirt besides my retro kid Beetlejuice animated TV series shirt. Right. Considering how much I love Beetlejuice, this is my first Beetlejuice shirt, and I'm very happy. Nice. Check them out at studiohousedesigns.com. All right. Ari Aster, Bo is Afraid. Um, I'd use, yeah. You've seen Hereditary. Oh, yes. And you've seen and I wasn't expecting Hereditary. I thought it was just going to be like another Conjuring type movie. Mm. Uh, no, it uh, knocked my head off. If you want to get all punny about it. Spoiler alert. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> it, 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 it's it was, been years, man. It's not a spoiler. I anymore. know. I know. Yes, it was. Um, it, 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 it made me lose my head as well. Mm. Now it's a, uh, <laughs> it, you know, I being as much of a fan of the genre as I am of horror, um, when someone comes in and does something interesting and new, it's always fun. Yeah. And the guys that have been really carrying the torch for filmmaking in the last few years, I've talked about it before, Ari Aster, um, definitely um, Jordan Peele. Oh, yeah. Robert Eggers. Um, I have a nope shirt in the other room. I'm going to wear that in an, you know, an episode or two. Yeah, that's, I mean, listen, um, Ty West, like, you know, with with Pearl X and now Maxine coming. Um, so, yeah, it, it, there's there's just, it's a great, it, it, it's kind of like the genre that I'm the most excited about. And um, yeah. with what's, going, what's been going on in the last little while. So get, getting a chance to talk to him um, was really fun. I... Uh, I was really excited that we got to do it in person. I think it's the first time we've done an interview on the show in person, you know? Oh yeah. So that was really cool. Yeah. And, uh, and I mean, you know, just a little backstory. We, we showed up at the, at the four seasons hotel where he was and, um, 
had to, you know, we were brought in, we were, we had to set up really quickly and he was in a room alone and it was really cool to just walk in and have like, no, there's no pretense. There was no, like, it was just like, oh, Hey, <laughs> he was so chill. I mean, yeah. he couldn't be more unassuming than, 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 than he was. And, um, but just a really, like a really brilliant mind. You could tell that the guys, he thinks about what he's going to say and he's um he puts a lot of thought into everything even his answers and i and i love that um and i have a story about what happened cuz i had brought some stuff to get signed okay i had brought four things to get signed four copies of midsummer and a copy of hereditary yeah okay so like 4k blu-rays and like something unique about them yeah, all yeah yeah like or i had a collector's up a video no 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 a24 mm-hmm. had this like big collector's edition that was like cloth bound ah, okay, really okay. nice book for midsummer and then I had the original Blu-ray that I bought. And then I had gotten the Italian one. Um, anyways, I had a bunch. And I had a version of Hereditary <laughs> as well. So I had them in my in my tote bag. And my tote bag is uh, a really cool bag by this company called Out of Print. And it was the cover of the original literary edition of A Clockwork Orange. Yeah. The Anthony Burgess movie, which a uh, book, which the movie is based on. So I had this tote bag. This is the second time that I've owned this tote bag. And that what I love about the tote bag is it's <laughs> perfect size to put a record in. So I would always, whenever I go to an interview that I want to get some stuff signed, it would be like my tote bag to bring because it also has a little pouch inside where you can put your markers, your Sharpies yeah. and all that. So I have this tote bag. First time I owned that tote bag was maybe eight years ago. And I had it for about a year. I went to Oshiaga and I interviewed Run the Jewels. Yeah. Killer Mike saw my tote bag and said, oh man, I love that. And I said, do you want it? And he says, oh man, really? I said, yeah, because I'm going to cut it out and I'm going to use it as a patch for my for a jacket. Like I love the design. I was like, cool, it's yours. I gave it to him. Lo and behold, I get a message from Melanie, yeah. the publicist, and she goes, I have an odd request. She goes, I got all your stuff signed, but Ari asked if you could have your tote bag. <laughs> I'm not kidding. And I was like, God damn it. I can never hold on to this thing. So <laughs> I said, I said, um, and I don't know how, how what's what's come about of it yet because I said, well, yes, he can have it. I go, but I want him to record a quick iPhone video saying thanks. Okay. So I didn't hear back. And then I just heard a message from her saying, Ari, love the interview. Thank yeah. you. And um, I've got something special for you as well as your signed stuff. So I don't know what it is, but. I can't believe, and then to make matters worse, I go on that website out of print to see if I can order the bag again. They don't ship to Canada anymore. No, oh, I thought you were going to say they're out of print. No, they still have them. Yeah, right. Oh, okay. But no, no, they still have the bag. <laughs> <laughs> that was horrible. <laughs> they still have the bag, but I can't get it here because they don't ship to Canada. Anyways, I just thought it was really cool that Ari Aster wanted something of mine, and I was like, Go ahead, dude. Because you clearly want so many things of his with your four copies of uh, each film. Well, I brought everything figuring, listen, I know I have a lot of friends, like I can think of a couple that would want probably something signed by him. So I brought like I brought everything that I had, figuring if he signs one or two, great. If he signs everything, maybe I'll have something to give to somebody who didn't get to be there, that kind of thing, whatever. But, um, But anyways, it was just a really cool experience to be able to chat with him and uh and he liked our interview which is great that's the yeah the thing i got back so um but yeah you could clearly see that i'm a little flustered and nervous in this but uh, i don't really care because it was ari aster and he's he was on my bucket list of people to talk to i gotta tell you man so awesome without any further ado here's our chat with ari aster from Bo is afraid Ah, really excited to be sitting here with Ari Aster um, for Bo Is Afraid. Uh, been a fan of yours now for the last two films. Um, you're so young in your film career, but already people are just blown away by your work, anticipating the next one. That's how it was for me after Hereditary. Um, I was frothing at the bit for Midsommar, and I was frothing at the bit for Bo Is Afraid. And I don't want to blow smoke, but it does not disappoint. Thank you. That's that's good. That's yeah. Um, it, there's something at the root of all these films which I related to immediately as I, I started thinking more and more after every film. It's all about family stories. It's all about situations that hap- happen with families. Um, it, it, it's And I think that's one of the things that, that I love about your movies is that a lot of people will label them as this and that, but they're family dramas. 
you know, things that'll happen between characters that everyone can kind of relate to, depending on how your childhood was. And, you know, when I watched Hereditary, I could understand, you know, feeling a certain way about a certain child and, and, and being a parent, you know, maybe liking this child more than that child at that time. And there's just so many themes that run through. Um, are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm fine. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm good. D- d- for for you, is it is it important to tell those kind of stories and kind of wrap them in in that genre? Is it something that that you really try to do, or you just try to make movies that that tell stories? Yeah, I mean, I I just, I just try to tell stories. Um, and uh, I mean, I I I it's true that uh, the three films I've made so far uh, are you know, steeped in like, you know, family. F- yeah, yeah. Family stuff. Yeah. But, um, I don't know. I also think it's kind of hard to get away from family. Of course. Um, yeah. In, in, in any sort of storytelling, I mean, or, or just, I mean, just relationships in general, like we, what, what, I don't know how you get away from it. And, right. and the most fraught relationships are the ones that we have with the people closest to us. Right. And in some ways, I mean, I don't know. I, I, I feel like Bo feels like an end of the road yeah. that maybe, maybe began with hered- with hereditary. So it it's uh, in a way it feels like some sort of completion. Right. Right. So uh, you know, and I and I know that the next films I plan on making uh, move away from those things. Right. Uh, not entirely, but yeah. Because I think a lot of people, when you know, and, and everybody's always looking to to, to categorize things. It's, I don't know if they're compartmentalized. And then you look at something like Hereditary, and then you look at something like Midsommar. And a lot of people are saying, "Well, they're companion films. You know, ones in the dark, ones in the light." But Bo, I felt just kind of, it, it just felt like it had a lot more. It just breathed more. It just went all over the place. It didn't really. It, it was really really hard to categorize. And and I think in a way. It's great because artistically you're able to do what you want. It really, really felt like you were able to go there and do what you wanted. You didn't have too many people telling you really like you shouldn't do this, you shouldn't do that. It felt like you had creative reins. Yeah. No, I mean, um, well, you know, good. That's yeah. great. That's uh and and that's true. I, I did have a lot of freedom on this film. Um uh not not only in the writing and then the production of the film, but also in cutting it together and, and, and finishing the film, it really kind of was always, uh, mine. It it was never really forced into another shape. Um, uh, and I'm, I'm really grateful to a 24 for giving me that freedom. Uh, and for, you know, kind of, uh, I, I I think just from very early on understanding what the film was and also what the risks were and just, uh, getting behind it. So I'm I'm very, uh, you know, I feel indebted to them for sure. Has your relationship with A24 been like that pretty much since the beginning? Yeah. Okay. It's been a very good. It's yeah. been a very 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 good relationship. Um, uh, I feel very fortunate, especially right now in this climate yeah. where it's so hard to make a film to get anything made. Which you know, which I know because I'm also you know I'm 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 I'm, I'm producing films right now and right. it's, and so it's, know, it's, yeah. it's very it's <laughs> very hard to get uh let's say um personal films made right um very very hard um it seems like the climate is improved though for genre films with what happened at the oscars this year with uh, everything everywhere all at once it seems like almost like a24 has arrived and and it makes me wonder how, what the future of that's going to be because you know, when I look at Hereditary, uh, Tony should have been nominated for Best Actress, like 110 percent. Like that was a, a complete snub. Um, her performance of that is incredible. Um, I think if that movie would have come out next year, it might have changed. So does, does that ever play in your head? I'm, I'm not so sure. No, I, well, I, I I think she deserved it, but oh, I, yeah. I, I I I think yeah, she's but, remarkable in it. But I but I I'm not I'm I'm not sure if uh, that film is very it's disturbing, <laughs> alienating. <Yeah>. Um, <laughs> But but yeah. you understand what I mean. It's, it seems like there's more focus now on on that studio and what what's coming out of that studio. People are starting to realize, oh wow, you know, the ones that have been in the know have been in the know for a long time. But it's yeah. nice to see that light shine on them now. Yeah, no, I'm I'm really excited for them, and I'm excited to be a, a part of what what they're doing. Um, yeah, I mean, who knows? I mean, who like you know, uh, 
that was kind of an anomalous Oscar year. Uh, there are also a lot more, uh, well, there are, are a lot of new Academy members. Right. Maybe that has some, something to do with it, but, could, um, could be. but you know, I've, I'm, I, I'm of course rooting for a 24. Yeah. It's your team. Um, Joaquin is so committed to this role. Um, it, he just, it, like, he is hard to take your eyes off this entire film. He's all, I think he's in this entire film. I don't know. There, there's not a lot of it that he's not in. Um, yeah. He's he's incredible. Um, was it taxing on him to do this film physically? Yeah, yeah. But I, 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 I imagine that it's always taxing on him. Yeah, um, he commits. Yeah, he always commits. I mean, it took a long time to convince him to do the film. I'm not even sure. I'm not even sure if it was about convincing him. Just okay. he took a long time to make the final decision to do the film. But I, 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 I think that that must always be the case with him because he, he commits. Because he knows that if once he says yes, he's he's you know he's devoting you know his his like his body and his you know and his. Yeah, he sells just him. His yeah, enti- yeah his, uh, to to whatever the film needs, uh, and yeah, it was it was a, it was an amazing experience working with him. I, I'm I'm really excited to to work with him again. It's very uh, it's it's um it's very it's very special uh, what he does, and it's not just the, his talent because he's really I mean he's amazing hmm. and he has such uh like deep reserves of like feeling and emotion and he's so like he's he's so uh able to just i don't know i mean really he's he's like a deeply vulnerable person yeah. um but also he he has this like incredibly uh deep engagement with whatever he's doing and um like he's, he's an artist yeah. and he kind of need, you know, it, it, the, the process of working with him is, is one of, uh, like by necessity, it's one of like rediscovery because the thing kind of needs to keep dying so that he can <laughs> jolt it back to life. But by, by turning another way, um, which I then kind of forces a new engagement on my part where I, I then have to pivot with him. Right. Um, and it never like you know it's not like the writing ever changes like the scr- like you know nothing ever changed in in the script but the energy around a scene would change change from day to day um, or through the day uh, in a way that was for me uh, really invigorating uh, and so yeah he's I, I uh, it, he's he's really amazing. Thank you for taking the time. I really appreciate it. And uh, continued success. And I can't wait to see what comes next. Oh, thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you. Big shout out to my buddy, Marco Vaccaro, who uh, yeah, did the other cam. Yeah, I was going to say, it, it was really nice to have Marco there. Because, you know, this is a new domain for us. Like, we haven't gone and done yeah. an in-person interview. So, it, it's always nice to have a second camera or another pair of hands. So, thanks, Marco. Appreciate it. Yeah. And uh, what's funny, as soon as the interview ended, I, I, you know, I hope I wasn't breaking any rules or something, but I just like, you know, said to Ari really quickly, I'm like, you know, in the interview, like, you know, I edit these things. I noticed that you, you take, you know, you really think about what you're going to say. And it's incredible how we've terraformed the world, like as human beings into how we call in response to each other. And only in your films do you ever give the actual breath of human conversation Mm. or moments and let them process. Like, after the thing happens in Hereditary, the fact he doesn't cut away and just lets the van go there for a good minute or two. You're in the theater almost tearing your seat out, just being like, give me some sort of resolution of what I just saw. Whether if it's a good one, a bad one, someone screaming at him, no one screaming at him, just something else so I can forget what is happening. And it's and in that I think that's the true power of his movies is that he lets them breathe. Oh yeah, he lets you he lets you steep in your terror, like you're yeah. sitting there like a fucking tea bag in hot water, and you're like, I, I want to get out now, and you're like, you're not going anywhere. And like, what, what do you mean? You're not going fucking anywhere. You sit right here. 
you're going to feel this. Yeah. And it's nice because yeah. you feel things. Yeah. And almost human beings, it almost seems unnatural that we would take 10 seconds to think about what we're going to say. And it's like, that's a good way of going about it. It's a lot better than filling dead air with incorrect answers or or you know or nonsense it's yeah. actually quite better to speak properly and that's something i should say to myself because i'm an insecure motor mouth who just wants to fill the void and no, every but now it, and then it, it goes terribly wrong it, i, I yeah. just i think it's it's cool to to have a chance to chat with somebody who you like not only do you like their work but you like you like them and everything i'd read yeah. about him and everything i've heard like i listened to the they're A24 as a podcast, and they they had an episode right after we interviewed him. They had an episode of just him and Joaquin Phoenix talking, and it was an hour oh, long. Oh, man, it was so good. Oh, wow. It was so okay, good. yeah, downloading that right now. Not so to... good to listen to. And, um, yeah, you know, two great minds that work in cinema now that are just always, you know, always coming with their A game. And that's what I love about him. And, you know, he's, he's not somebody that, like I said at the beginning, he's very uh, unassuming. He's not. You know, he doesn't have any ego. He's just really nice, really cool yeah. guy. And and um, I was just really glad that we got an opportunity to talk with him because not many people did. No, and it I'm not going to take that for granted. In fact, Marco had work later that day and he went to bed at 7 a.m. and still got up because he's just like, look, when well, when are you ever going to meet Ari Oster again? Yeah, yeah. when are you going to be in yeah. a room with him, even if you're filming, whatever. You know what I mean? Like I get yeah. it 100%. So um, so thank you to, um, to, to Melanie at, um, you know, the, PR um, company and from for sphere and everybody who, who helped to make that happen because it was really, uh, it was something else. It was a really, really cool. A special one for, for us here, I think on the podcast yeah. and talking about the movie. I mean, the movie's great. Yeah. The movie is the less, you know, about the movie going in the better, I think is, is true. Like, uh, like most of his movies, you know um, I asked him when we start, before we started filming, when you guys were setting up, I said, I want to ask you a question. He said, Go ahead. I go, there's stuff going on in this movie that I couldn't wait in my mind. To, in my mind, I kept saying, I can't wait until I own this. Because when I mm. own it, I can stop. I can rewind. Yeah. I can freeze yeah. it. Like I can, I can rewind. I can mm. go forward. I go, I'm because you always put Easter eggs and stuff. He goes, there's tons in this movie. I said, I can't wait. <laughs> because really, Midsommar had so many. Um, Hereditary had so many. Just and there was a couple that I noticed when we were watching the film um, in Bo's apartment, for example, there's one time where he looks at a picture of his dad and I was sure I saw something else in that picture, another face looking sideways. And I was like, Oh man, I can't wait to watch this again. Kind of like everything everywhere all at once. But yeah. And, and there's, there's also this warning for the tenants. Every time he goes to his apartment, like there's a warning about a spider and then there's a warning about this or that. Yeah. And then the letters, the perception, it's just, it's really crazy. And we must bring up too, that it was shot in our good old hometown yeah. of Montreal. And, yeah. And, and a lot and of Montreal. really fun. Yeah. And a lot of Montrealers. Shout out to Tristan, who is, uh, you'll see later in this uh, commune thing that I, I want, don't want to give too much away about because it's kind of a plot device, but uh, Tristan's one of the best actors in the city and it's so awesome to see him get some uh, recognition but uh but also it's really cool to see montreal like you know looked like total shit yeah <laughs> uh, in the beginning <laughs> depicted i believe as i believe it was like at some city i'm not sure if it was new york but it definitely had a new york vibe uh, yeah. a new york vibe and um a, a colorful cast of characters on the street let's just put Man, it that way yeah listen it, yeah. It, it, actually yeah. a lot of the scenes in Bo's apartment were shot right near well we're shot in the village um okay. and they were really a lot of shots were like i was talking to mel melissa i went to go get tattooed and she was saying oh yeah you could see our sign if you squint you could see our sign okay. like it off off the distance and um so yeah shout out to montreal being in there shout out to barry morgan so barry mm. morgan whose voice and who's who's new casting news casting we heard in the screen movie the last screen movie his voice is yeah. there and he shoots he, he throws uh, as a newscaster he throws to tara schwartz and Tara was the nice. newscaster in the movie. Nice. And I said to her, I sent her a message. I said, "Hey, congratulations! Like I saw you in the in the movie." And she had told me a year ago. She goes, "Oh, I'm I, I'm in the new Ari Aster movie." She goes, "It's really fucking. I can't wait for you to see it." And, <laughs> and, and she goes, "How's the movie? I haven't seen it yet." I go, "It's great." She goes, "Man," she goes, "He asked me to say some fucked up things." <laughs> and I was like, "Oh, great." <laughs> So uh, I read for that movie twice. I know you got to tell him that. Tell, let's talk about that. Yeah. You got to tell him that. Okay. 
Well, yeah, I got to tell him that, but then I kind of realized I'm like, I think I'm. I, I said these exact words. I'm like, I don't think too much of myself, but I, I, I kind of realized I'm too pretty to play the two guys that I tried out for, and I, and not too young, and too kind of like, I wasn't nearly as menacing enough because the people they cast for the reasons they cast, yeah, are holy shit yeah. <laughs> like uh very very intimidating and very rememberable roles oh yeah, yeah. in very certain ways yeah, no, yeah totally memorable and you and i think yeah. you had said you read and he said something like be careful what you wish for yeah yeah it's like oh yeah because uh you know what you never know like you'd be careful what you wish for you think you want to roll and then and you see what you have like, to do yeah. yeah yeah then you see what you have to do and and the fact of the matter is i'm just like Every time something like that happens in a movie, I'm just picturing my friends making thousands of gifts of certain <laughs> certain yeah, well. scenes that, uh, you know, very brave actors, very brave actors uh, when they get those roles and they go through with it in this day and age with uh, the digital age. Yeah. You know, a lot of people who did fucking crazy stuff like that in thousands and thousands of movies in the 70s, the concept of home video didn't even exist. So they're like, why? Is my mother going to pay to see this B movie in the cinema? Like uh, the concept of home video, it it was so different back then. But now it's all instantly. Oh, now, yeah, yeah. Now you do something yeah, that's on the internet forever. On the internet forever. I mean, the concept back in the day is there's no internet. No, no one's going to see this. Oh, well, now and now the thing is they're going to dig up all that old stuff and they're going to still put it on the internet. So you're fucked either way. There you go. Yeah, yeah. But uh, but it, all in all, I I I think it's a great film. I'm really glad we got to see it together. I'm glad we got to see it early. Um, it's in theaters everywhere as of now, and um, definitely check it out. Um, hats off to A24 for again, you know, from what I read, this is their most expensive budget, 35 million for a movie. Okay. Um, but well, it does have an Oscar winner in it, so yeah. You know. I mean, come on, he's he's. A, I mean, and even he alluded in the interview. He said he goes like, we weren't sure we had him yet. Like we are, we were, we were still waiting to see. Is he a multiple Oscar winner or just one Oscar? Winner? I know he was nominated for as John to be Johnny Cash. Uh, I think I don't won. know if he won. I don't know if he won. Hang on, let me just check. Four time, four time nominee, one time winner. He was okay. nominated for best supporting actor as Commodus and Gladiator in two thousand one. Mm-hmm. He was okay. nominated for best actor as Johnny Cash. <clears throat> yeah, nominated. As for Freddie Quell and the Master in 2013, he won Best Actor for Arthur Fleck Joker and the Joker. It's true. I think you should know that he won. When a bunch of it's go- crazy when you think about it. Like Joaquin Phoenix, all these crazy movies he's ever done. It's like he won for Joker. Joker yeah. is Oscar caliber yeah. stuff. That's crazy. Just goes to show you, you can't put comic books all in a box. Be like, oh, they're all the same. It's like, no, they're not. No, no, the Joker movie is like special, and so is the last Batman movie. They're just, it's a, it's a different thing. It's a different thing that's yeah. going on, and it's a thing that they should continue in that theme with because it works. Um, but yeah. yeah, man, it was, it was wonderful to have Ari Aster with us. I'm really excited about um, people seeing Bo was Afraid, and um, and thank you again to Melanie um for for helping us get that interview and for um and to everyone at a24 and on tract and thanks to melody at mingo 2 communications and um and to all of you for watching the podcast and again a big thanks to our title sponsor heartbeat hot sauce they are the heartbeat of the rockman power hour and if you've never tried them before definitely check out heartbeat hot sauce use our promo code rockman20 and you'll get 20 percent off your entire order. And thanks to Studio House Designs as well. Thank you to AKG for helping us sound as good as we can. And thanks to all of you. Please like, subscribe. If you're enjoying the podcast, let people know about it. And let us know in the comments if there's anyone you would love us to chat with or any subjects you'd love us to cover. We'll be more than happy to oblige. My thanks to my co-host, Ryan Stick. Thank you to our producer, Julia Kajerski. And thanks to all of you for joining us on this journey. We'll see you next time on the Rockman Power Hour.